I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome everyone. Let the record show that all members of the City Council are present this evening with the exception of Councilman Kerr. A copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted in the meeting room and is accessible to members of the public at any time during the course of this meeting. We're going to start the meeting out with the recognition of some of our uh, loyal and uh, very dedicated city employees. We on uh, uh, numerous occasions have held uh, an event uh, where it was a set down dinner and because of COVID, because of everything that has gone on this year, we decided to uh, not do that this year and to recognize them as we can. Uh, they also receive uh, some uh, chamber dollars and that is uh, something that is going to be utilized uh, however they want to do it. Hopefully they'll take their uh, uh, spouse or their significant other out for a, a nice dinner, gentlemen. All right, so I will go down here, I'll pass out their certificates, and uh, Tobias will do the honors as far as reading who is actually going to receive them. Tobias? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so every year we honor those who have had 5, 10, 15, 20 years of experience, however it works out. Uh, so this year we'll start with those we're honoring for five years of service. Uh, the first one we have is Derek Hosick. <laughs> uh, Todd Miller is from the landfill. He's not here tonight. Frederick Nauman IV. <laughs> Natasha Nesbitt. Kylie Schoen is not here this evening. Paul Valentine. And Carla Zarbenicki. For those celebrating 15 years of service with the city, we have Tracy Bear. And Bob Kobez and Corey Lenneman were not available for this evening. Uh, for 20 years of service, we have Carrie McGurry. And Aaron Sadoff. And for 20 years, Brian Carver and Jim Young were not available for this evening. Uh, celebrating 25 years, we have Jerry Jessman Jr. And Mark Pethod. With 30 years of experience at the city, uh, we have Brian Dakey. <laughs> Brian McAllister. Jay Murphy. Give these guys a round of applause. We had two more 30 years who were not able to make it tonight. Dave Warnicky and James Zarbanowski were not able to make it tonight. So, all right, Jim's here. 
or Jim Young is here. Oh, yeah, we'll celebrate Jim Young. Jim Young just got off a call, didn't you, Jim? <laughs> We're going to reward you. Jim, come on. Jim has 20 years of service with the city actress, so thank you, Jim. Now, as much as we'd like all of you to stay, you don't have to, so don't feel bad if you get up and walk out. It's quite okay. You'll not be the first nor the last person to do so. All right, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. All items under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or citizen so requests. First item is approve agenda as submitted. B, receive and place on file all notices pertaining to this meeting. C, receive and place on file all materials having any bearing on this meeting. D, approval of minutes of the regular meeting on February 15, 2021, as on file in the city clerk's office. E, approval of treasurer's report of claims. E1, approval of gauge area growth and gauge claim in the amount of $33,560.97. E2, approval of balance of treasurer's report of claims in the amount of $233,212.85. Two Item F, approval of Boswell report of claims in the amount of $80,576.15. G, approval of write-off of ambulance bad debts. H, award of bid for the Bell Street, 5th Street to 6th Street concrete reconstruction project, 2021 to RL Team and Construction in the amount of $137,288.79, as recommended by the Board of Public Works. Item I, approval of change order number one, an increase in the amount of $24,010 to Building Crafts, Inc. for the WPC Dewatering Improvements Project, as recommended by the Board of Public Works. Item J, resolution number 6687, adopting the public access policy regulating the public's asset access and use of city-owned buildings and the property to protect the safety of city staff and all persons visiting such buildings and property. Item K, resolution number 6688, entering into a farm lease with Justin M. Wiegand for farming purposes. And item L, resolution number 6689, entering into a farm lease between the city and Larry Delabar and Greg Delabar for pasture purposes. Is there any item that any council member wants removed from the consent agenda? Mr. Claybaugh? Um, Mayor, I'll abstain on item E1. <coughs> duly noted. Anybody else? I'll abstain from number for uh, D, the minutes. I was not here last meeting. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone from the public? All right, Mr. Claybaugh. I move that the items listed under the consent agenda be approved, accepted, and are ratified as presented. Second. Moved by Claybaugh, seconded by Morgan, that all items listed under the consent, uh, consent agenda be approved, accepted, and or ratified. Your vote, please. And that is approved 7-0. We have no public hearings this afternoon or this evening. Next is a resolution, resolution number 6690, executing the Memorandum of Understanding between the City, the Department of Interior, National Park Service, and the Nebraska Department of Transportation to assist in the design and construction of a hike bike trail connecting the City and Homestead National Historical Park. I move that resolution number 6690 be passed and adopted. Second. Moved by Claybaugh, seconded by Billsbach, that resolution number 6690 be passed and adopted. Tobias? Uh, this is the first step of many of working to extend the uh, city trail system from uh, the Riverside Park out to the homestead. Uh, what you see here tonight is a, basically an MOU or memorandum of understanding, whereas all the parties kind of put forth some under what we're going to be working on. Uh, National Park Service has some money available to them today, uh, which we use to help uh, start with a preliminary design kind of an outlay, outline of where they think this trail might be able to go to, in order to make that extension. Uh, the Nebraska Department of Transportation, they'll serve as the responsible party of this. Uh, some of the trail may be on their right of way, which is why they'd be involved. And then ultimately the city of Beatrice would be the ones who own and maintain the trail 
out to the homestead, and that's how our uh, involvement comes in. Uh, we may also be the ones that then have to make the application for certain grants uh, in the future. Uh, just so everybody knows, we're looking at the same type of funding that you had for the last trail system. Uh, so don't anticipate this being built anytime in the next couple of years. This is a multi-year project, um, but this is the first step. Questions, gentlemen? Rick. What type of, service, of, of surface will that be? Will that be concrete? Is it? That part is still to be discussed and decided. Uh, at this point, it has not been decided whether it would be chat rock or concrete or some other type of surface. It says hard surface. Hard surface. Okay. Anyone else? From the public. All right, your vote please. And that is approved 7-0. Resolution 6690 has been passed and adopted. Next is resolution number 6691, naming the trail beginning at the intersection of 6th Street and Caldwell Street and ending in Hannibal Park, the Pioneer Trail. I move that resolution number 6691 be passed and adopted. Second. Moved by Claybaugh, seconded by Billsbuck, that resolution number 6691 be passed and adopted. Well, we thought before we start the next trail project, we should probably name the last one. Uh, <coughs> so you saw uh, Pioneer Trails, what we came up with as a name. Uh, we came up with probably different, 25 different options we've thrown out there over the last six months or so uh, working on a name. It'll start at Six and Codwell, which is the dog park, and extend then to Hannibal Park uh, is where this trail will take place. Questions? The public. Great addition. What's that? Great addition. Yeah, I would agree. From the public? All right, your vote, please. And that is approved 7-0. Resolution 6691 has been passed and adopted. Next is resolution 6692, executing a loan agreement, promissory note, deed of trust, personal guarantee, UCC financing statement, and relating documents between the city and Yule Sporting Goods, LLC, Philip Detbrenner and Karen Detbrenner for an economic development loan totaling $189,000 for funds derived from LB840 dollars as recommended by the Citizens Advisory Review Committee. I move that resolution number 6692 be passed and adopted. Second. Moved by Claybaugh, seconded by Tim Fralin, that resolution 6692 be passed and adopted. We received a LB840 loan application from uh, Yule Sporting Good, the Dip Brenners. Uh, they're working on purchasing uh, Yule Sporting Good, which exists today, and making some improvements there. I'll let Phil and Karen come up and talk about those improvements. Uh, what they're asking for is a $189,000 loan, a seven-year repayment period, 3% interest, um, and the first payment would be due in May 1st of this year. So uh, those are the terms of the loan. And Phil, if you want to come up and talk about what you're doing and... You can bring Karen with you if you like. <coughs> <laughs> she doesn't uh, like. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, hopefully purchase the uh, Yule Sporting Goods from Dave and, and his wife Beth and uh, add some things to it. We want to have more of a retail uh, kind of a feel to it. Uh, we're still going to do screen printing. We're going to uh, step into embroidery going to do some other things maybe with laser printing and hopefully expand and do some internet sales and things like that but uh, we just uh, wanted to keep the Yule's name in Beatrice and we had the opportunity so that's where we're at. You're going to continue to do the trophies and everything? Then too? Oh yes yes still continue the trophies and, and medals and, and everything else so and we've been very fortunate working with Dave and Beth on this they've uh, allowed us to go in and start working inside the facility and getting things ready so when we do get in there and get going we can go full bore so thank you for your time good luck thank any you. other questions congratulations uh gary not necessarily a phil but a couple of them i see that we're the subordinate position on the loan is and not about phil's bone but in general do we are most of the loans we make this we always in a subordinate position or a first position. So what you're reading there is if you have to go back, we did the downtown revitalization grant. In that was the city got the superior lien. Your lien will be sec second to the city's first lien that we already have for the downtown grant. What you're getting rid of is originally we had agreed to subordinate to another bank. Uh, that bank is no longer in the picture. And so you're removing that subordination uh, agreement for them. And so you'll have both the first and second position. The first one is for your grant 
application, as long as they don't remove the improvements in the first couple of years, that ultimately gets forgiven. And then the second will be this actual loan. Does our part of the loan run parallel with the uh, first lender as far as the length of term? The first lender is us. We're the oh, lender we, oh, both okay. of them. So, so we're subordinating. We're not subordinating. We're getting rid of the subordination. You had agreed to subordinate months ago. Right. That's out of the picture. You're getting rid of that clause. Okay. We're, the, we're the only financier in the picture. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Any other questions? Gentlemen, anyone from the public? All right. Your vote, please. That is approved 7-0. Resolution 6692 has been passed and adopted. Congratulations. Next is an ordinance, an ordinance amending section 2-362 of the Beatrice City Code regarding the Beatrice Community Redevelopment Authority. I move that said ordinance be given number 21-9, the title thereof be approved and rules be suspended and said ordinance be read by number only three times tonight. Second. second. Moved by Claymore, seconded by Morgan, that the ordinance be given number 21-9, the title thereof approved, the rules suspended, and the ordinance be read by number only three times tonight. A motion to suspend the rules is not debatable. Your vote, please. That is approved 7-0. Ordinance number 21-9 by number the first time, ordinance 21-9 by number the second time, and ordinance 21-9 by number the third and final time. I move that ordinance number 21-9 <coughs> be passed and approved. <coughs> Second. Moved by Claybaugh, seconded by Freeland, that ordinance number 21-9 be passed and approved. Tobias? In a recent review of our city code, what we found was that, well, first off, the CRA is the Citizens' Right Review Committee. They're the ones who oversee TIF applications. Uh, in a recent review of our city code, what we found was our city code set a quorum. It's a five-member board. A quorum resulted in four. State statute said a quorum was three, and so we had a conflict, and so we're simply removing the quorum requirement out of your city code, so it falls back to state statute and being three members, three out of five. Cleans things up a little bit. Questions? Public? All right, your vote, please. That is approved 7-0. Ordinance number 21-9 has been passed and adopted. Next is the public forum. Purpose of the public forum is for the presentation of an item by the general public to the city council for consideration at a later date. No discussion or action will be taken by the city council at this time. Is there anyone here for the public forum? All right, next we go into discussion and reports regarding sanitation department bond issuance review. And with us from Piper Sandler and Company is Jay Spearman. Jay, come on up and you can have a seat. I kind of move those chairs around. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, council members. Uh, we were in the market last week with the city's 2730000 of revenue bonds uh, had a really good sale most of those bonds were sold to the local financial institutions I believe out of the two million seven thirty there was only a couple hundred thousand that was not sold locally uh, the average interest rate on the revenue bonds was 1.143 percent keep in mind that's for a 10-year repayment cycle and your all-inclusive costs once you factor in uh, the interest rate as well as the costs associated with issuing the bonds the all-inclusive cost was 1.328%. Your average annual principal and interest payment for the 10 years is $290,242. We will close on these bonds at the end of the month, March 30th, and that's the day we'll wire transfer the net proceeds to the city, as well as that's the day then interest starts to accrue on the bonds. These bonds are like all your bonds that you've issued in the past where they'll have a five-year call period on them, meaning that those bondholders know that they're going to at least own them for five years. Anytime on or after that, it's up to the city whether you leave them outstanding or call them in and, and refinance them or pay them off. That's all I have, Mayor. Questions of Jay? I don't have a question for him. I've got a question for Tobias. So our bond history, we've never extended, have we? What do you mean never extended? At the end of the five-year period, and we have the chance after seven to have to extend them. We've never had that that issue, have we? No, I mean the bonds will be there up to what ten-year bonds, I believe, is what they are. Yeah. You can call them earlier, which means you can pay them off sooner. Right. Um, we've done some refinancing, something like that in the past. I don't know if we've ever actually just called them in. Yeah. You, you do have the ability after the end of the five years, right. you could call them in, and then instead of amortizing that, re-amortizing them over five years, you could potentially extend that out if necessary, if that answers your question. Yeah, it does. It's just more internal. I just wondered if we'd ever had to do that before. And I, 
and I don't not that I can I don't recall and I, I we've just, refinanced we've bonds refinanced before. bonds sure. we've advanced refinanced bonds which I'm not allowed anymore uh, we've done some of those things but yeah but that was a money saver right 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 okay you don't get much lower than this no you don't get much lower than that <laughs> I don't know we'll see if Jay can work his magic and get him lower here in five years <laughs> <laughs> any other questions of Jay nope no okay thank you Jay thanks thank for you coming. thank you appreciate it any other questions anyone from the public all right, your vote, please. No vote. Oh, well, there's no vote. Next is our uh, police department annual report. Chief Lang. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm pleased to present our 2020 uh, annual report for the Beatrice Police Department. Um, as you can imagine, 2020 was a challenging year for all of us. Uh, for the law enforcement uh, community, it was also um, a bit unusual. Our call load was uh, down somewhat based uh, on, you know, just people being quarantined, being at home more, businesses being closed, and all the things that uh, associate with activity. Activity generates uh, police activity and so since those things were reduced, our numbers were down a little bit for 2020. Um, probably the thing I wanted to, to bring to everyone's attention today and talk just briefly about is our mental health calls. Um, mental health uh, issues in our community, in our state, and in our nation are significant. Our police officers are assessing uh, two people out of every three days, roughly, um, for uh, serious mental, Ill, mental illness and making assessments whether those people are a danger to themselves or others and uh, acting accordingly. Uh, it's something that uh, in visiting with the schools, they're seeing a tremendous amount of, of mental health issues and that spills over into uh, the kind of things that our police officers are dealing with every day. Um, and it seems like uh, it's certainly not getting better, it's getting worse and so I, I it's a challenge um, to say that we're not um, trained properly, I guess would leave the impression that we don't train on it, we do, but it's hard for a police officer at two in the morning to um, be able to handle some of the mental illness issues that we're, we're dealing with. And so that's a challenge for us, it's a challenge for all of my uh, uh, other fellow officers across the country. So um, it's one of those things, I don't know the answer, um, I just know the question, and, the, and that is what do we try to do to make that better in our country, and uh, I don't know that answer, but um, it's something that spills over and we're dealing with on a, on a pretty significant basis as far as numbers. Um, raw number, about 200 times this, in 2020, our police officers were evaluating someone to see if they were uh, mentally ill and dangerous to themselves. That's a pretty big number in a community of size. Um, in addition, on a brighter note, <laughs> um, we, uh, we have had a couple uh, losses of employees this year that were significant. Um, our victim assistance coordinator, after 20 years, um, has been hired away by a scoundrel uh, who, who uh, within the city. Uh, actually, she made a career change, and that's we're, we're real supportive of her. Uh, you know, I come here last few years, we talked about the large number of victim services we provide. Um, it's mind-boggling. We're still seeing, you know, 750 to 800 new uh, victims of crime that we're dealing with and supporting and providing services for, and so we're in the process of replacing that position uh, here in the next couple weeks. Um, and then we uh, just this last week uh, lost a longtime uh, night sergeant, Doug Kuhn, has been with us over 20 years, and he's uh, also made a career change. Um, so, you know, this business does somewhat wear on you. I used to be six foot six before I started, so <laughs> just let you know a little bit what it's like. So anyway, those are some of the things that uh, that we're dealing with. And uh, when you lose employees, uh, it does allow for new promotions. It, that's somewhat healthy and, and gives people chances to move move up in the organization. And uh, so that's that's a positive. But you certainly hate to lose experience that we're that we're losing, like here. And then the last thing I'll touch on is we take a lot of pride in our community relations and community service projects that we do. And 2020 
because of the pandemic prevented us from doing those things. And you know, we're really itching to get back at those, uh, our Lunch with a Cop program, our Community, community Connection program, uh, just the different things that we do like that around in our community. Uh, we really miss being able to do that and interact with the community. And so we're hoping in 2021 we get uh, this thing behind us so we can get back out there and, and feel like we can get better connected with our community. So that's kind of one of our goals for the year. With that, I'll stop. I know you got a lot going on here a little bit, so I'll uh, be glad to answer any questions you might have. I just had a quick question on the <clears throat> mental health thing. When you make those calls, where do you transport patients that need you know, extra care? Do they go to Lincoln? Or? Well, that's a great question. Um, we, have a, we actually have a pretty good network right now of what we can do with people that are in crisis. Um, we, have a, we have the opportunity to use a, a service called TASC, T-A-S-C, and that is on-call mental health professionals that we hook up with remotely. And they actually, we, have, we carry a laptop computer and we, and we can dial into these guys and they're, they're there 24 seven. And they will visit, will privately visit with those, those people and, and uh, kind of give us some feedback as to how um, critical the crisis is that they're in, what, what they best recommend. We work with those folks. That's been really positive. Uh, the Beatrice Community Hospital has um, has developed a telehealth um, uh, element with mental health, and so they're able to uh, work with Bryan Hospital and with their mental health professionals. So we, that's another option for us. And then if and in Nebraska, if a person is deemed to be a danger to themselves or others, a police officer then can have that person uh, committed and evaluated for 72 hours. Um, we're the only ones that can do that. A doctor can't do it. It's the craziest thing ever, but, but it comes back on in, in our lap. But we can do that, and we have a contract with a uh, service in Lincoln at Bryan Hospital. So we do take uh, folks up there as well on in, in, in an involuntary basis. That's kind of our last resort there. If, so those are kind of the, the three things that we deal with or the options we have when we have those kind of situations. Gary? Chief, uh, just as your statistics go for the general population of our community, uh, I know people that work in our school system that deal with some of these things too. Right. And does that run parallel to what our, our general population is doing? Or what have you seen on calls to even sadly our grade schools when they need officers, is that increased or decreased? Does that kind of go with everything else that we have going on in Gage County or Beatrice? Well, it's, 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 it parallels a good, uh, a good analogy there, most definitely. Um, you know, we work really, really close with the schools, the folks that we're dealing with with our school resource officers. Uh, they get those reports in the mornings of things that are going on that tips them off that, hey, you know, I, we might have an issue there. If mom or dad had some problems the night before. They can work with the kids or the kid had a problem the night before. Um, then they uh, can work with the school. And uh, if the school issues has or they have some issues at school, they work with us. So it's pretty seamless like that. That's a good thing. Um, but they're seeing uh, the first thing that the principals will tell you, whether it be elementary, uh, middle school or high school across the country, is that mental health issues are, are really difficult to handle and pretty prevalent. Thank you. Yeah. Ted. Two things, Bruce. First, uh, as I read through the report on your traffic, uh, mm -hmm. so you're from compared to the last couple of years, your warnings versus citations, the percentages you're still giving out far many, far more warnings than you are citations, mm -hmm. but that's trending upwards. And I, I the, the ratio is getting closer i and it just noticeable i know that's an officer's discretion mm -hmm. but i just wondered if you had a you had any reason for that uh -huh. and, um and then i have one other question so. as a police officer a former police officer you know that um somewhat fluctuates with the experience of the officers okay. as they've been down the road a few more times they they may uh be a little more um have a little more uh, favorable discretion, I should say, that maybe as they go on and they've seen more things and, and they can put more things in priority. Um, that's part of it. But another part of it is, especially this last year, um, when we didn't just didn't do as much traffic enforcement, because there was a period of time when we were not doing um, minor offenses just because of the contact issue. And so um, we didn't obviously make a public announcement of that, but uh, we, you know, we cut back our our enforcement just because of that so 
what that means is then you would see if they did stop somebody, it was probably a little bit more serious than what you would see maybe at another time. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, it did. And yeah. there was a time period in there. There was a lot less traffic. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. no doubt about from, it. Yeah, for some, from somebody that drives around every day. Um, so the other thing is, is it kind of touched on the same mental health thing that the other guy that that Mike and Gary mentioned. You know, I noticed you in, you said in the report there was about 180 calls for you know that were suicidal, that they had to make that determination or could have, and that that kind of goes to where your two number your 200 is, but in your report is about 180. I noticed that the uh, the amount of time and effort and training and tactical support you have, uh, you know, you listed that on you know for your your react team, your SWAT mm -hmm. team, and I and I understand that that's you know, sexier, but would would the time for your officers be better spent instead of training for that, mm -hmm. training for your mental health thing? We, um, I mean, I, I think from just, you know, I, I know what you're saying. Resources. Exactly. I know exactly what you're saying. Okay. And we, we, each year we set out a training calendar for the year and getting training, the getting training, mental health training for police officers that would be tailored towards what we do and how the, it's really hard to find. Yeah. And you know, we, you know, when we set that, we know those numbers and we knew this number was going to be big. We start tracking this last January because I just had an inkling that, that this was going to be a pretty big number. So as we go forward in this next year, we'll absolutely search out any and every mental health training that we can get for the officers um, uh, that we can find. And, been a, my experience has been finding good training like that is very difficult. Finding training is not that difficult. Finding good training for that, okay. that is difficult. But, um, you know, you're 100% correct in that we need to make sure we tailor our, our training and our education of our officers towards uh, those things that our community is dealing with, and that's yeah, mental have, health is certainly one of them. You have 180 calls for service in this area, mm -hmm. you have four in this area, Correct. and you're spending an enormous amount of time in training in this. No, no doubt about it. I, no doubt I'm about it. I'm yep. not trying to tell you how no, to I know what you're job. saying, and I'm I... Just, yep, and I agree with you 100%. I'm just reading a report. Right? Yep, okay. I agree. That's all I've got. Rick? Uh, Bruce, can, can you um, talk a little bit about the uh, safari something that was that officer McCormick had put together and what that was about and everything the safari what was that I can't remember no I'm not sure, I'm not sure. It, it, uh, other uh, other uh, officers from around the country came into Beatrice and for training and um, I can't remember it's toward the toward the end of the 43 pages but yeah and, uh, I don't oh, remember. okay I'd, I'd like yep. to <laughs> I all don't right remember. sorry okay. Any other questions? Gentlemen? Chief, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Appreciate the report. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, with that, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. I move that the city, the Beatrice City Council go into closed session at 7.33 p.m. for the protection of public interest to discuss real estate. Second. By Claybaugh, seconded by Fralin. We go into executive session at 7.33 for the protection of the public interest to discuss real estate. Your vote, please. That is approved 7-0.